In an era of rampant surveillance, government secrecy, and whistleblower crackdowns, more and more questions have arisen over the actions and intentions of the U.S. government. But regardless of how doubtful we may be of its justifications, we're taught to just accept the explanations that are given. And if we don't, if we acknowledge the gaping holes, well, that just makes us conspiracy theorists, the pejorative term that for years has been cast on those who have been bold enough to ask questions. So how did we get to a place where truth seekers are now conspiracy theorists? And what damage does it do to the pursuit of truth? Talk about all that and more. I'm joined by Lance DeHaven Smith, a professor of public administration at Florida State University and the author of a new book called Conspiracy Theory in America. Lance, thanks so much for Thank joining you, me. Pleasure Abby. to have you on. I'm glad to be here. So, Lance, you've done a lot of research on the on the concept of conspiracy theories, the origin of the term. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the history of when this became a tool used to discredit legitimate questioning. It happened after the Warren Commission report was criticized for. Uh, the lone gunman theory and people were saying that they didn't believe that and the CIA started a propaganda campaign a global co propaganda campaign to label these people conspiracy theorists and to uh, you know ridicule them and say that they were just doing it to make money or they had uh, they were in love with their own theories or they were under the the uh, control of, of uh, communist propagandists <laughs> I call so, it the conspiracy theory conspiracy. I mean, they <laughs> conspired to discourage us from talking about conspiracies. It's, it's amazing. So this actually was a concerted effort on behalf of the CIA to discredit those who were questioning the Warren Commission yeah, at absolutely. the time. And you've actually proposed an alternative term, SCADS, uh, state crimes against democracy, as, uh, as an alternative term to conspiracy theories. What exactly is that? Well, it's just a, it's just a name for high crimes. It's a name for the thing that the conspiracy theory label discourages us from talking about. And if we can't name it, it's really hard to deal with it. If people can just stop the discussion when they say conspiracy theory, where do you go from there? So what I've suggested is there are crimes like white collar crime, juvenile crime. Let's give a name to this type of crime. We've seen it. We know that we had Watergate. We know that we had Iran-Contra. We know that the Bush administration misled us about intelligence for invading Iraq. We know we have these crimes, so let's name them and study them, study them as a group. The tendency with the conspiracy theory label is to look at these one by one, but the label forces us to look at them as a group and to compare them, look for similar targets, similar timing, similar policy consequences, just the way we'd study any crime. Right, a historical context and not look at it and say, oh, it's Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is usually the right one. Well, really, when you're looking at everything in this historical narrative, it is a lot more complicated than we'd like to be, you know, dismiss them as. Y you mentioned these patterns, looking at um, the patterns around SCADs. Can you talk about one such example of a pattern that you've found? Hmm. Assassinations is very obvious. The, the only people who get assassinated in America America political leaders are presidents. Uh, the vice presidents are not targeted. U.S. senators die in plane crashes when the Senate is evenly divided between Republicans and Democrats. And what this is showing you is that their interest in killing people who have control of, of foreign policy and they don't attack. I don't want to give anybody ideas, but I mean, they don't attack Supreme Court justices. I mean, these people have enormous influence. Why do they not get targeted? Well, the, the people that get targeted have control of foreign policy, and that tells you that the people who are doing this have an interest in foreign policy. Well, I always thought it was very interesting how we accept the fact that we have assassinated, not we, but the U.S. government um, in concert with the CIA have assassinated leaders, foreign leaders across the world to perpetuate kind of global policies, yet we find it so hard to believe that they would do that actually within this own country, within our own country. And the, the weird thing is when we did this overseas, we started seeing assassinations in our own country. Mm. It was in the 50s and early 60s that we were targeting people in Egypt and, and Latin America. And then we see it show up in our own country. And I think that's what happens. The CIA gets skills that then migrate back into American politics. Of course. And one of the most dominant conspiracies uh, ever, and I hate even using that term because every, you know, conspiracies are real, so it's really yeah, right. baseless to even use this to explain something um, in a pejorative way. But the assassination of JFK, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm talking about a poll that just came out in May of this year that I wanted to show you. Majority of Americans believe that Oswald did not act alone in killing JFK. Right. Why is it? that this is nothing more than a conspiracy uh, by the establishment, mainstream media, when the majority of people think this. 
And the, but the political class will not say these things. Realize the, 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 the Kennedy assassination is obviously a conspiracy. We know that from the evidence in the Warren Commission report. The bullet hole in his neck was higher than the exit in his back, so the tra trajectory had to be down. Well, you couldn't shoot from the sixth floor and have a trajectory like that. They absconded the body after the, this, this was a murder in Texas, should have been investigated by Texas with uh, Texas doctors doing the autopsy. They took the body, some say with guns drawn, and put it on Air Force One, which was not a transport plane. Um, so so I mean, it doesn't questions. hold any, any, right. any water at all. But what happened is the political class shuts down discussion of it and condemns anybody who says differently. Think about this. The Kennedy family has not right. said anything until just about six months ago, Robert Kennedy Jr. said that he thought it was a conspiracy and that Amazing. we should look at it. But the family, Amazing. but that was what's going on is people are frightened. Right. People are frightened to say anything. The Kennedys are, are frightened. The, when Howard Hunt was breaking in on the Watergate burglary, there was a plan that he did with G. Gordon Liddy to kill Jack Anderson and Ted Kennedy. And they were called off. But this gives you, I mean, th these people are not playing. This is very serious stuff. No, and I, I think I read that Jackie O on her deathbed actually said uh, something to, this, to the same um, thing, that she had questions as well. Unfortunately, you know, it takes someone who's almost dead to, to come out and actually acknowledge that she thinks that there was yeah. something more to the story. Right. Why is this so damaging? Why? What does this do to discredit really the, the fundamental of a democracy? Well, we're, our system of government is based on the idea that citizens are vigilant. We have a check and balance the system because we assume that the leaders will abuse authority, other things equal. So we try to pit them against each other. Uh, we, we try to hold them accountable through an oath of office and uh, have impeachment processes and things like that, but we assume that it that we have an energized citizenry, and when that is silenced, it allows the collusion to occur between the branches of government, and you consolidate power, and people lose their freedom of thought. I tell you something, Americans won't remember, but the Nuremberg war crimes trials, the first charge in the indictment was conspiracy to take over the government to fight an aggressive war. It was a conspiracy. We said we were doing this to teach the Germans that, a, that people in a democracy have a responsibility to hold their leaders accountable. And, you, and the Germans didn't do it. They let these Nazis come in, take over the government, and start wars. So it's in Americans' tradition to be vigilant and skeptical and concerned about right, a leader. That's patriotic. That's quiet, patriotic. That's patriotic. And Lance, I still have a lot of questions about almost every event that seems to be the catalyst of endless war, the erosion of civil liberties. However, I'm shocked at how little Americans question overall. Why do you think so many people blindly accept official government narratives? What they're told is, and what, what you hear people say is, well, American government just wouldn't do these things. And, and if they tried to do them, they couldn't do them. They're not competent enough. And if they did do them and pulled them off, somebody would talk. What people forget is, wait a minute, we built the atomic bomb. Over 100,000 people worked on that project, and the word never got out. Harry Truman didn't know about the atomic bomb until he had been president a week. So we can keep a secret, and we do, you know, we infiltrate. Even from the president of the United States. Even from the president of the United States. Lance, there seems to be, you know, unfortunately, there seems to be a conspiracy culture jumping to conclusions, making undeclared, um, or I'm sorry, making unfounded declarations in the wake of every event now, from hurricanes to mass shootings, and I think yeah. it's because of this lack of transparency from the government that we're seeing. What damage does this do to people who are legitimately seeking truth? It's really a pro The conspiracy theory term is a blanket label. It doesn't make any distinctions between a crazy idea and a very realistic idea. It just paints one broad brush, and what we've got to do instead is talk specifically about what the suspicion is. Let's just call it a suspicion and say here's the evidence for it and we have to be willing to discuss these things on the merits and quit trying to shut down conversation. It's really undermining our public discourse and making it very difficult to be reasonable in politics. 
I always say, you know, I take the government narrative and I don't say I have the answer, I know what really happened. All I know is what didn't happen. Right. <laughs> and what they say right. isn't possible. <laughs> what, what the government keeps coming up with is what I call coincidence theory. Right. They always say, well, that's just a coincidence. That's a million coincidence. coincidences yeah. happen at one time. Lance, we have to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Lance D. Haven, author, Conspiracy Theory in America. Everyone check it out. Very important subject, important book. Thanks okay. a lot. Thanks a lot, Abby.